All right, in this video we're taking a look at the BUGS 20 EIS GPS drone. So this one is the first in the BUGS series that has the uh, electronic image stabilization. Uh, we'll take a look at the drone, I'll explain all that here in a second. Just give you an overview of everything that comes in the box at first. So this one here is a special version that comes with the storage case. Uh, you can get the drone by itself with just one battery with no case or you can get uh, different combinations of the case with one battery, two batteries, or three batteries. So they come in different versions, so obviously the price is going to vary. The more batteries you get, of course, you're going to uh, pay a little bit more. But you get the case here, you get the controller, here's an extra battery here, there's one inside the drone. So this is the two battery version. Uh, get a user guide, user manual, and a quick start guide does come with uh, spare propellers and a USB-C cable for charging the um, batteries. Uh, this one here, let's see, this has a charger built in to the battery itself, so just plug in the USB-C here, and then the other side just plug into a wall adapter of some sort. Uh, that's not included. You get a screwdriver for putting on the propellers. And you see here, two screws here. Prop is not folding. This little top piece here is just a piece of plastic that covers up the top. The two screws here actually hold the propeller to the motor. The drone itself here kind of reminds me of like a uh, Phantom almost uh, from like a few years ago with these little stands that lift the drone off the ground. And then you have the uh, camera here. It's a 4K camera on these. Uh, dampening rubber balls, dampens vibration, but there's no gimbal. The, the the camera angle is adjustable though, so you can adjust it uh, up and down here on this pivot, so it's like a one axis gimbal basically, but uh, the image is actually stabilized all inside the camera via electronic image stabilization. So of course this has the GPS and a compass inside, do your normal uh, compass calibration dance at the beginning of every flight, as usual. Uh, GPS can be turned on and off on the controller. And then there is a optical flow sensor on the bottom here. Um, it will it'll keep position if you're not in GPS mode or if you don't have a GPS lock. If you're within about three meters of the ground, above about three meters, you don't really, uh, it doesn't really work that well, kind of drifts around. And then here in the front is the uh, slot for the micro SD card, and that is um, going to be at least a class 10 or better. Otherwise, if it's too slow, your recordings aren't going to be not so good. All right, quick look at the controller itself here. On off switch here uh, shows your distance and away from home, uh, and also height over here on the controller, and then number of satellites locked. Mode 2, obviously, is the default. You can switch it back and forth. It's your Drone or the controller battery level here and the drone battery level will show up here if it's connected. Obviously it's not right now. And then this, uh, these two bars here on the side show the signal strength to the uh, drone. Obviously uh, altitude hold because it's a centering throttle here. Lock unlock button here to unlock the propellers and take off. Get your photo and video button here. Long press for video, short press for photos. You return the home button here. On uh, the top here on this side, the shoulders is the gimbal angle adjustment up and down. Rates button here, and this turns on the uh, lights. And this button over here is for uh, one touch takeoff and landing. There's a slider button here on the, on the right that actually enables and disables the GPS. So up will be GPS on. And then on the back here is uh, slot for two AA batteries, that's going to be for the controller. The uh, smartphone will go up here and this top, and this does collapse down into the controller as well as the antennas, as well as these handles. So this is what it looks like, totally folded down. Alright, so I'm just going to do some line of sight flying here and just using the remote without the phone app. And we'll see if we can get some video recordings and some photos up close. Uh, one touch takeoff here. Uh, 
one touch takeoff does not seem to do anything. Right, let's try the unlock button. And throttle up. There we go. So, quite locked in. There's uh, optical flow and uh, other, I think it's a. So there's an optical flow sensor underneath. So it's looking at the ground. Pretty smooth. They're not moving at all. So I'm in the low rate here. It's uh, <laughs> this full stick forward, folks, right here. Look at that. So there's a barometer and optical flow sensor on here, so they should maintain pretty good altitude. Okay, let's uh, let's turn on the video recording. Uh, it looks like I turned the gimbal down. Let's, let's pull that up. So the uh, throttle control is very high, but the actual movement on the sticks on the right side is very slow in the low rates. Let's uh, bring that back. So this is the uh, this is full stick yaw to the left. Oh, it's really, really slow. Well, let's switch this over to high rates. All right, so now this is high rates, much faster. And to the right, to the left. So, I think the low rates is really more for like cinematic type of footage, if that's what you're going to get along with the electronic image stabilization. So I'm just flying this line of sight, not only get too far away from me. And I have no idea what the footage is going to look like, so we'll see. How's it looking, guys? This is definitely one of the smoothest flying uh, bugs GPS drones I've ever flown. It's super smooth. So they've done a lot of improvements over the years in their flight controller, GPS software. Uh, this is very nice. I'm, I'm pretty sure with the electronic image stabilization, the video quality is going to be a lot better than some of the other drones that have come from bugs. But again, we'll have to see. Fly a little lower to the ground here. Let's turn it around. Now we got a little bit of wind here. I will mess around, mess with the barometer a little bit, but it's not really doing much to it. Pretty nice. So if you're in low rates, you're gonna you're gonna be able to get some really smooth footage. Let's get a little lower to the ground here. Let's see how it does keeping off the ground. So pretty low to the ground here. Now let's see what happens when he gets close to this little hill here. Will it raise up? Nope. So that part's not working so great. It ought to be able to sense the ground and try and avoid that, but it's not doing that. 
other drones like DJI drones will give you like an uh, like a audible warning of some kind. Let's get it kind of above me here and see if I can tilt that gimbal now. Let's uh I can't see it so let me see where is that pointing? Alright, there you go. Looking kind of at me. All right, send it away. Send it straight up. Go back a little bit. So I bring that gimbal back up and we'll yaw around. Let's put that into low rates and we'll do yaw again the other way. Very slow. You can get some nice panning shots. All right, so let's stop the recording. And I guess hit the long press to stop the recording. Two beeps. Now let's take some photos, so short press. And we'll just turn it here. I imagine this is gonna be basically still shots of the pan that we just did. I don't think that they make much differentiation between the videos and photos but we'll I'll just take a look and see what they look like and uh, let's see what this looks like into the sun uh, I should check to see if the gimbal is actually pointing kind of outwards instead of downwards let's bring that back here All right. Now that was pointing outwards, so I'm gonna send this away a little bit here and we'll test the return to home. Let's go back. I'm gonna bring it down actually a little bit and then go back further away. All right, hitting the return to home button. Let's see what it does here. It's going up. It's coming towards me. Let's see if it'll land where it took off from on the concrete. That's off to right above me. It's off to the right a bit. It's kind of hovering there. It's going to wait and then it's going to start descending. So I'm going to wonder if I'm wondering about this uh, stanchion here it's going to avoid that or not. Now it's paused for a second, interestingly. Now it's coming down. There we go. So it looks like it's going to land pretty close. Oh, no, it stopped again. Oh, so it paused a couple of times. Now it's landing. Ah, oh. so it took off from right there. So it's a I'd say about a meter away from where it took off, so yeah, pretty good. 
All right, so we got 14 satellites and did the compass calibration already. I'm going to start recording video. And it looks like the maps are not working yet again. So it doesn't look like I'll be able to do any of those um, waypoints or anything like that. Let's go ahead and take off. So there's not a lot of wind right now, uh, barely any wind. So it's a good time to test something like this, see how stable it is. It's uh, very stable in the air as you saw previously. So we're just looking at the app at this point. And uh, the drone's not that far from me. It's, let's see here. Yeah, it's about 14 meters away. I'm already getting a little bit of video jitter. The Wi-Fi signal isn't that strong. It looks like I have, a, I have a strong Wi-Fi signal, but I'm getting a lot of video jitter. And, yeah, it's not, that's not the drone, I don't think. I think the recorded video will be looking a lot better. Just head out a little bit further and let's go up a little higher. So as I yaw around, you can see that the horizon does not stay level and that's because it's not a true gimbal. Uh, it is trying to electronically stabilize the image in camera. You can see here, it's a little bit more pronounced you can see the left side is a little higher than the right side. And I think it's because, let me just point the camera this way. I think the wind is pushing it from the right to the left. And so, or actually the other way around, from the left to the right. So it's tilting to the left a little bit to compensate. And there's definitely some lag and latency in this Wi-Fi video. And you can see here as I turn into the sun, the props are, are basically showing, uh, throwing a shadow as it rotates into the video based on the frame rate. But uh, in terms of stability, the, the video st stability is <laughs> much better than any previous bugs drone I've used before, at least the ones that don't have the gimbals. I don't think there, I think there might have been one or two that had a gimbal before, but let's just uh, see if we can fly it through these, uh, the parking lot over here. A little side, side panning. So it is 4K video, but it's a lower bit rate. So obviously this is not really for professional use, but it I mean, could be okay for casual consumer use. So you can see I'm in the car because it is about 100 outside, degrees outside, very hot. So here I'm doing like a, a manual orbit. I'm actually rolling to the right and yawing to the, uh, yawing to the right, rolling to the left. But let's see here bring up this menu. Uh, let's go further back. So when you bring up the menu, the sticks still work. Yeah, the follow me and the orbit, all that, I think I've tested that on the previous uh, Bugs drones. So I think it's gonna work the same way. 
Oh, and the app crashed. Okay, so I had to launch it a couple of times. These uh, drone apps from China are very buggy. But it looks like the drone just kind of waited there. It didn't, it didn't do anything. And we're getting an audible warning here. Battery only supports drone flying in 30 meter altitude and 100 meter range. Fine, I'm not going to go far anyway. All right, so I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, I think it's the drone battery, but I still have two bars on the remote. So, it's a little bit strange that it's already giving me these warnings. 